Hello again everyone and welcome back to the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage YouTube channel. You are looking at uh, the dis disconnected uh, uh, direct drive motor from my Singer 301A, the one that's seemingly led a tough life. Now you can do what I'm going to show you here without having the motor apart. In fact the motor can be actually together but uh, uh, anyway I can show you here but you don't have to disassemble the whole motor in order to check your brushes but we're going to do that today and again I have the the, the half that holds the brushes what are you going to what are you seeing here you see a housing for the brush you see this little curved piece of copper it does a couple of things it provides pressure it's a spring so it keeps the housing kind of where it needs to be and of course this copper piece is connected to where the main uh, power motor leads okay so the the, the power uh, uh, wires they connect and they head down to they eventually connect here which is where you um, connect your power cord connections to the ones I showed you but for today I want to just kind of show you the the way to remove these now uh, notice I have a very small thin screwdriver and I can come here and just sort of be careful yeah, I'm going to pry and put your finger on top of it so it doesn't go flying into the air okay and I'm just pulling it up and when I do where's my it should actually come out towards you you can pull it out towards you and just literally take it out uh, in this case I can take it out with my finger now in my in this situation the brush you can see the nice long spring high quality springs since 1951 it still works and you can see the brush or what's I have more than a quarter of an inch now if you had this uh, this much brush left you could still use it but I mean if you're this far into it why not replace them brushes are easy to get for these and they're very inexpensive so just just go ahead you've gotten it all open why not um, right now though I see oil on this brush that's not good no no we should not be seeing oil of any kind here so I have a feeling that someone attempted to do something to the machine and thought oh let's squirt some oil in there surely that'll help no 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 this is true of any place in your machine that's not designed to have oil and especially anything that is electrical because remember um, you don't want oil and grease in in most of the areas that that um, that are part of an electrical motor uh, the only places that need lubricating and this is not again part of your normal oiling process are going to be a bushing or a bearing and that's pretty much it right everything else in the motor of course you'll be putting grease on the gear but that's because the gear is um, is going to engage with the hand wheel gear but in terms of the electrical housing of the motor itself there really is no place you should ever put oil except for the places I just listed uh, and uh, believe actually with in the case of the of the uh, of the bushing which is what this grease port feeds it's actually grease and of course the bearing on the top here it takes grease and I'm not opening up the bearing uh, but I will, I, as I've shown in the past, I can put one or two drops, no more, of SAE 30 weight oil. You can get that usually, you might find it in a car parts store, usually in a hardware store. Uh, people sometimes use it for chainsaws and things like that. Uh, now, so this is not a good sign. Um, I'm cleaning the oil off the brushes. I'm going to replace the brushes. Uh, and again, uh, when these go back in, you'll see the, the spring goes right in. And of course, you have to, it's under tension, of course, so when you put it in, you, uh, you don't actually put this back in until the actual commutator, once the motor's put back together, then your brush has something to push against, right? If you try to put the brush in now without the commutator, uh, it's just going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to pop right out, right? It's going to probably go down into the, the housing of the motor here, so there's no need to do that. But you need, you need to get it out if you're, if you're going to... Uh, if you could tell when I was showing you all, you can, again, this opening here is there so that, you know, a service person back in the day could look, right? So you can see when the motor, excuse me, when the, when the, uh, 
when the brush is in the housing, you can actually see, you can, I think you can see, I got, I got, I uh, had to give my uh, flashlight some new batteries. So you can see the spring, you can see the, the rungs of the spring here, and then they stop down here because it's darker because that's where the brush is. That's how you can do a quick read of your brushes if your eyesight's sharp enough. But again, um, we're not gonna put these back in because there's nothing holding them there. Um, but essentially, I, uh, I think, and you can, like I say, you can order the brushes online. They're not hard to get. They should not cost you very much. Um, brushes last a long time. Once you replace these brushes, you should be good to go for decades, unless you're just sewing like, you know, every day or something. Um, brush wear is always proportional to how many hours you're on a machine, but these, these brushes last a long time. So I can take the other brush out, uh, and then what do we do? Well, apparently, I'm not going to be testing this motor until I can get that missing piece. As I mentioned to you all in an earlier video, you see, look at the top of the arch here. You see that notch? There's a notch at the top of the arch, and there's a, a little slit right here on the opposite side, and there's a little triangular speed bump shaped piece of steel that goes in there. I think it's steel, steel or aluminum. And it's there to kind of, um, when these two pieces join. So I'm going to be searching for that. I had no idea it was missing. Many of these motors have never been opened and I assume this one hadn't either, but someone has, uh, because it would be very odd for this to leave the factory without that piece. So here we are. And you, <laughs> you may find yourself when you're working on sewing machines, you know, you got a pile of parts there, you know, you don't have everything you need. That's normal. Don't let that bug you. Uh, if I let that bother me, I would never have restored any machine. <laughs> really, most of the machines I work on would never have gotten fixed if I, if I uh, let that bother me, right? So uh, you have a good place to put your stuff. Remember, when you do something like this, uh, take photographs at every time you undo something take photos, make notes. Oh, these bolts are the big bolts for the motor, right? And so you remember where things go. Uh, Cause you may or may not find videos. And let's see, I, oh, the only other thing I've done is I took my 99% isopropyl rubbing alcohol and I took a uh, clean cotton swab and I basically went over my commutator and I just took the alcohol, again, 99%, and just went over the commutator and you don't see much now, but there was, you know, basically a mixture of black uh, carbon, which I think came off the, from the brushes as they wore. And there was some kind of, like I say, they were sticky gooey. So I think there may have been oil in here. So that has to come off. I still don't know if this motor is going to run properly. It might, <clears throat> or it might not. We are going to find out. But again, I can't even test the motor until at least I have that part. Uh, I really need that part to make sure that when I put it back together, get the new brushes in. And that's basically what we're going to do. Oh, and by the way, while this is out, let's, let me see if I can, let's get the other brush out before we, we uh, end here. And then I'll show you why I want that other brush out. So I'm just gonna get it gently pry it, hold it so it doesn't go flying. You can grab it with your fingers or you can use some small needle nose if you can't get your fingers in there. And again, you see the other one. And again, this one also has, yeah, it has carbon. <clears throat> That's normal, but it also has some oily stuff in there. So somebody was messing around in here. Don't know why. I'm sure they meant well, uh, but they didn't do well because uh, they should not be putting grease here. Not as bad as that axle grease and that chem ore that those of you are still waiting for me one day to try to save. Um, but right now, uh, I really would like to, to rescue this 301. I consider it one of the finest machines ever made. Certainly one of the finest singers ever made. Um, now, oh, what was I wanting to mention to you? And now you see, remember I showed you in the earlier video, there's a bearing for the motor and it sits right here. That ring inside this uh, sort of cylinder shaped piece, the ring at the base of the worm gear there, that is the bearing. And on the other end, what you see down here in the bottom, that's a bushing, it's not a bearing. A bushing, again, is like a cylinder sleeve. And 
this end of the motor, the drive shaft, it actually sits down in that, bu in, the, in that bushing, that sleeve, and it spins. And so, what do we, what do we know? We know that that's, that bushing is fed grease by the grease port. And of course, eventually, they would have lifetime you know, uh, lubrication, which meant they did away with the port. And yeah, you could re-grease the bushing if you needed to, but you'd have to take the whole motor apart. You see how, over the years, uh, what companies were doing to make things less fixable, uh, less easy to, to maintain. Um, so again, I'm looking down in here to see what I can see. I mostly see dirt and old grease. Uh, so what I'll do is, again, I've been taking my, my cotton swabs and trying to just, again, soak up. Cotton swabs are like little sponges. If they start to fray, don't keep using it. Get yourself a fresh one. Um, so, and, but again, they pick up stuff. They're absorbent. I really want to absorb any grease or oil in here. There shouldn't be any. Um, somebody decided to go to town. They were going to make things better, and they ended up creating a lot of work for me. <laughs> um, and, and this is all in the assumption that this motor is still going to work. I may discover that, nope, uh, I may have to trash the motor. That sounds awful, but, you know, uh, it, you have to have a motor that is uh, usable and workable. That's the great thing about Singers. They made so many machines for so many decades. They kept models in production. Of all the brands that you will ever... Now, as soon as I say this, I won't be able to find the part. Uh, of all the brands you'll ever restore, Singers are the easiest to find parts for because they were made in many countries around the world and, and sold in many countries. And the fact is, they didn't just ditch a model after... Usually, they, they would not ditch a model right away. They would keep making it for decades. Now, I'm going down into the bottom of the bushing here. And... Like I say, above at 12 o'clock on this bushing, would be there will be a hole where the the uh, the grease port that I've shown you all, right there, with its little felt uh, wick. That's where the grease wicks down into to to feed the shaft. And the reason you want grease here and not oil is because now some machines, later machines, would use one drop of oil for the bushing. So it, it doesn't mean no machine can use it, but this machine was designed to have the Singer grease in there. And, you know, again, I don't know if anyone's ever actually cleaned this thing, but you can see the, the quality. I don't know if that's bronze or brass, but that's not, that's not junk, right? They didn't build this thing to be disposable. Uh, and as, as any of you who know my channel know that that's part of my fascination with these machines is the fact that they were made so well, like so many consumer items were once upon a time. Now, again... Uh, I'm taking cotton swabs. It's kind of slow going here. Be careful. You don't want to start digging around in there with anything really sharp. But I'm pulling stuff out gradually. But basically, that is what it looks like when the brushes are out. And you can get a little bit better view now. You can see... I need something to point with here. Where's a pointer? All right. If you look down in here, you may be able to see, again, the wire leads that go to uh, the, uh, where the plugs, where those two plugs come in for the power, right? And they come. And then, of course, you've also got your, uh, you don't see them now, but of course you have your brushes and the commutator. And the brushes are also connected um, on this side to wires as well, right? Uh, I love this motor design, and I sell them. How many years have I done this now? I, I'm losing, I'm losing count. I think it's 10 uh, or more. But um, it's very odd. I don't normally see this, thankfully, often. But I'm seeing it here where somebody, you know, again, didn't know. They decided they would try to fix things or maybe the machine was having a problem. They went in. and So I'm going in here trying to see if I can salvage the motor. And if I can't, it's not a tragedy. There are, there are replacements. Not new, but there are replacements for these. You can find them online. And uh, so if you have a machine that you are determined to restore, especially if it has personal provenance, 
It belonged to your mom or your grandmom or your great aunt or whoever. You have a very good reason for wanting not just a vintage machine, but that vintage machine. I've been asked before, and I would give anything to have my mother's or my grandmother's machine, but I have none of those machines still exist in our family. So I, uh, I try to appreciate others. Um, so there you go. Uh, that is the bushing on the other end. That's what it looks like. And that's why you need grease. Later, you would, you would have to take all this apart for grease. And for some of the later machines that have those small out belted motors, like you see with a lot of the, say the Japanese, for example, Japanese clones, uh, they have bushings as well. But those bushings, and they have bushings on both sides, but they need lubrication. And if you're lucky and you have a little pinhole port, I've done videos showing how you add one drop, not five, one drop of sewing machine oil to those holes and no more. And that, again, gives the bushing some lubrication for this shaft. And remember, your machine, you know, your motor drive shaft is spinning at high RPMs and it needs that uh, lubrication. But just you know, I, I know it sounds so geeky to say, but just look at the quality of this thing. Even when it, even when it's been treated like crap, it still is just an amazing to think that a consumer product was made with this level of, of quality. Uh, thankfully, we have a lot of these things from the past to enjoy and to uh, to keep going because um, it's very hard to find consumer items today that are made this way uh, at any price. So. Thanks for watching everyone. Uh, this is where I'm at now with the motor and I know I'm missing at least this part. I need to, to get that part and then I'll continue on with the cleaning. We're gonna, again, I'm gonna clean the oil off of this. This is easy, you just take a rag and some 99% uh, alcohol and this, this old, this is what old oil looks like. They call it varnish uh, and it can be very sticky. Uh, we'll get all that off, that's easy, that's, that's easy stuff and then try to get it put back together. Uh, maybe get some new brushes in there. I, I think I have these, I keep extra brushes on hand, might as well. Uh, and I could do all of this and it could all amount to nothing if the motor doesn't run, but I'm gonna see if it's salvageable. Oh, and uh, we will see what happens, but uh, hopefully at some point, this old 301 is gonna come back to life. That's my determination, that's why I bought it. I knew it was in a sad state. I think, what did I give for this thing? I think I gave maybe 35 bucks for it and nobody else wanted it because it, I mean, it was covered in dust. It looked like, it looked like the sad state of repairs that it is in, uh, but that didn't bother me. I wanted to take a chance mainly because of uh, that beautiful rotary hook design and the stitch that many of you who have these machines already know quite well. Thanks for watching everyone and uh, hang in there and uh, cross your fingers, wish me luck, and we'll see what happens.